Hello everyone, it's Marion from Wool Thread Paint here and today's tutorial is to show you how to make this envelope border for the Blair Athol blanket. Now an envelope border is made in two parts. You have a front part and a back part. They're made separately and then they're crocheted together and in the act of crocheting that together you seal up this border and all the ends which are looking a bit straggly, all over a thousand of them, are neatly trapped within the border and they won't unravel so it saves having to um, you know, pull them, to stitch them in. Um, this border is made very simply once you've got past the first round. Uh, it's just three rounds of treble stitch and then I've chosen to use my side to side slip stitch join to uh, crochet them together and I've put a little bobble in the corner just to give it a little accent uh, and we'll do that later. So this is the beauty about the, of the envelope border. It um, gives you a very crisp, neat, professional look to the blanket and at the same time all these ends are hidden and safely out of the way. I'm using meadow for the main colour and if I put this away I'll pick up my sample piece which is the little piece I've used for the pattern tutorials and this is what I'm going to put my border on today and um, what you will need are two crochet hooks the normal four millimeter one which I did for the used for the whole of the blanket and a 3.5 millimeter which is just one size smaller and which makes the border a little neater and crisper so I'll put that away just now because I'm going to be working with the four millimeter I've also got the three colors sitting in front of me here I've got pistachio which you might wonder why because the border itself is in meadow and I've also got what was left of my khaki yarn because this is what we're going to start with. Now we're not completely onto the border as such yet because what I want to do is if you look this was the um, very start of the blanket when you did that initial 200 chains to make the very first row that's this end and this is the end where we finished with the extra row of um, two trebles, two double crochets, two trebles to fill in the spaces and that looks slightly different from the, um, the beginning. So what I'm going to do is try and balance it up and I'm going to be using the um, same colour as we started with and I'm going to do a row of half trebles along this beginning um, border and that will balance this up I think and give us a nicer edge to work into. So that's going to be my kind of maintenance job to start with. Uh, this of course is has been done in grey in your blanket. You will have done this uh, last row in khaki as well because it's obviously a much longer piece and that was the 258th row was khaki which also I think balances because if we do a slightly deeper khaki border on the um, beginning and at the end it will balance itself out. So what I have decided to do, I tried, I did a little bit of trial and error and I did try an edge with treble stitch but I just felt it was too big. So I've opted to do a, a row of half trebles along here just to try to um, look similar to where we start, where we finished. So first of all, you need to put your hook in um, at the end of the row. Oh, and the other thing is, I think it's easier if I hold this up. This is the front side, or this was the side that we started with, and this is the reverse side. And I think it's actually easier to see where to put your hook if you work in the reverse side and it will also balance it quite well. So I'm going to put my, working on the reverse side of that first 
row. I'm going to make my slip stitch to start and then I'm going to chain two which is the equivalent of the half uh, treble stitch. I use chain two for half to, to start when I'm doing half treble as well as treble. So chain two and then into the next stitch and half treble. Now that's yarn over, put in your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. So that makes a slightly smaller stitch to treble, hence half treble. Into the next stitch, pull up your loop, yarn over, pull through all three, yarn over, into the next stitch and continue along like that. Quite simply, one row of half treble stitch, which will give us a nice edge to the beginning of the blanket. So I'll come back when I've got to the end of this row. And there you are, that's my row of half trebles completed. And you can see that it does balance really quite well with the other end. And um, I'm now ready to start the border. Some of you may have scratched your head a little bit and thought, why did she not do the row of half trebles first? Why did I not chain my 200, make my row of half trebles and then start the pattern? But the reason is this. You can see that this is a very neat edge of um, stitches, stitch tops, which will be quite um, clear to see when you're making the slip stitch, which is what we're going to do next. And we've got the same thing on the top of the other end. So this makes it a little bit easier, I think, anyway. Right, now, <coughs> excuse me. I'm going to take my next colour and I'm going to, I've chosen to use the pistachio because what we're going to do is a round all the way around the blanket of slip stitch. And these slip stitches, you'll see them when I start, are actually what you're going to use to work into when you make your rounds of treble stitch to make the actual border. So basically, we're putting down a framework around the blanket with um, the pistachio colour and that's what we're going to work into when we're doing the treble stitches rather than trying to work into this bobbly edge which is a little bit complicated looking. Um, why the light colour? Well, it's because I want my slip stitches to be quite clear so that I know where I'm putting my hook when I'm doing my uh, uh, meadow coloured border. It's just a slightly different colour. It's not too much of a difference so that if you do uh, show a little bit of the slip stitch, it won't matter. But it's just a little bit of a contrast to make it easier to see. Right, so I'm going to go in. Now you can start at any point along here if you like. And I would normally, I would, in your blanket, I would suggest you do start maybe in the middle rather than, than at an edge. But I've decided to just do round three sides of this blanket rather, this sample, rather than four sides because I want to do something a little bit different with this side as an option if you don't want to do this uh, border. So I'm going to leave this part unworked. So that, that way I want to actually start at an edge so that I can get this full side done. So uh, what I'm going to do is just put my hook in on the uh, first stitch and pull up a loop like that and we can start off. Now this end here, this short end, will be one of the very few ends where you will have to sew it in. So leave it long enough to sew in. Take your hook, we're still working with the four millimeter hook at this point, and into the next stitch and pull through your uh, pistachio color and through the first loop. And that's the first slip stitch. Into the next one, pull through, and pull through. 
and that's all you need to do on this edge. I'll just put that short end out of the way. Just pull through and pull through. Quite easy. One thing to bear in mind is that you want to try to keep these loops quite loose and you don't want to want to pull it tight because you're going to be working into these loops um, when you're making your border and you're also going to be working into the back of these stitches. Can you see that? And that kind of explains why I wanted to use the pistachio so that you can see it clearly. And these are going to be um, the stitches that you work into for this side of the, the border and the loops for the other side. So try to keep, give yourself an easy task for later by keeping your slip stitch as, um, not you know, not ridiculously loose, but at the same time, not pulling it too tight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work along this top row until I get to the corner and then I'll stop. I'll come back and show you how to work down this side. Oh, the other thing is, I should have mentioned this before, you can see the difference in the tails on this side. The tails I've trimmed down to, uh, let's see, I'll get my ruler. I've trimmed down to about four centimetres, which is just about an inch and a half, three to four centimetres, an inch and a half will be enough to, um, if you trim them down to that, then um, they're not so bulky in the, uh, when they're trapped in the border. So I'll come back when I've got along to the end and then I'll show you how to start going down the side. I've now got along to the end of this um, bottom edge of my blanket and I've put my ruler here for a reason. And this is because this is a nice even number of um, slip stitches and we want to continue that even number when we go up this side which is a little bit bobbly and um, is not so difficult to do, but it's quite easy to maybe put in too many slip stitches or too few slip stitches. And then that can affect the um, lie of the border. So I've put my ruler down, or you could use a tape measure, and I've put my ruler down at one end and I've just looked at four inches or 10 centimetres and if I count from that four inch mark 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 stitches, 20 slip stitches fitting into four inches or 10 centimetres. So what you can do now um, as a help is turn your blanket round and measure up four inches from the end of the blanket and just pop a little stitch marker in and that is going to give you an idea that you want to get 20 stitches into that um, from there to there. And then you can, um, when you get to there, you can mo mo use your tape measure ruler, measure another four inches and put another um, stitch marker in. And that way you should manage to get a nice even number of stitches along this end of your border. So I'm not going to deny that it's, I'm going to put this out through. I'm not going to die that it's a little bit tricky to work with all these wobbly edges, wobbly ends, and they do want to get in the way when you're doing your slip stitch. But um, don't worry too much. If they do get trapped in the slip stitch, you can just, when you've done your complete row, you can just go back and pull them out because they want to be above the slip stitch if possible. So I'm going to just start here. That's number one, number two, number three, 
Now we've got to get 20 in there, so that's roughly uh, halfway, so that's 10. So you want to maybe do, split that again, that's five. So I've maybe done two, maybe too many too close. No, I don't think so, they're quite good. So into the next space. Pull up my loop. And into the next one. Just pull these, these ends out the way. This is going to take a little while, so you're not trying to get it done in half an hour. Don't think that. Just go with the flow and uh, work, as, uh, work at the pace that is necessary to get it just right. It really is worth it. And just... And so on, like that. So that's the first 20 of my slip stitches done along the edge of the um, blanket. You can see that I'm just in from the edge very slightly. You can see the knots where the ends were knotted. So I'm just in from that. And I'm quite happy with my uh, the size of my slip stitches. They are pretty similar to the ones that have come along the bottom. Um, so this means that my edge, my uh, uh, border edge will be nice and flat. The way I tend to work is I tend to push these um, ends out of the way as I'm doing my slip stitch. So inevitably they do tend to get, some of them get caught up in the stitch at the back. So you can just Work along and pull them, there's one. Just pull them out uh, because you want these, you want this to be a clean line and you want that to be a clean line and these ends just um, free uh, um, along the edge. So any that get, do get trapped as you're working, you can just pull them out and uh, before you start to do your actual border. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on, I'll measure my next 20, uh, next four inches and then the next one and I'll see you when I've got all the way round with my slip stitch and sh show you what happens to start the actual border itself. That is the long side done now and I'm sure you'll heave a sigh of relief when you've got to the end of that and you have um, got a breather before you do the next long side with these pesky ends. But um, I think what happens is that you get into a rhythm and you tend to, your, your hook tends to find its, its way. Uh, once you've done a few of the stitches, you'll begin to know where to put them for um, the next one. So that's that row done. And I'm just using my needle rather than my hook just to go along and yank out any of these pesky ends that have uh, got trapped. Just pull them out. Takes a minute or two to do that, uh, but I don't mind that. I mean, I'd rather, I'd rather just not worry about it when I'm actually doing the slip stitch than try to, um, you know, just try to do it and keep putting them out of the way as I'm stitching. I just stitch on and let them do their own thing and then just check them at the end. See, there's another couple that just need to get pulled out. So on, until you get everything uh, neatly in place. As I say, you want to have all these ends free and you've got your row of slip stitch on one side and your row of back, what well, looks like back stitch, it's the back of the slip stitch on the other side. So I'll take a little bit more time to do that in a minute, but then it's time now to go around the corner and just do as you did before, just slip stitch into the tops of these uh, stitches. This is the easy bit. 
and just work into each one and keeping your stitches as loose as is practical. There you go. So you can see that's me round the corner. And um, as I said, I'm going to leave this, uh, this side just now because there's something I want to do with that. But um, you would con complete your entire blanket all the way round until you get back to the beginning. And that's you got your foundation made for your border. Now it's time to do the actual border stitch itself using the meadow yarn and I've gone down to my three and a half millimeter hook and I've turned my blanket onto the reverse side so that it's those little stitches on the back of the slip stitches that we're going to work into first because they are the most tricky ones to do so let's get over and done with them first. This side is easier and if you do this side first there's a tendency to pull these ones even tighter and then it makes it all the more difficult. So I have uh, got my meadow yarn on my hook and I've made us, I've started not an, at an end, but in the middle. And I have started with my usual slip stitch and chain two into the first um, uh, back stitch. And now I'm going to just pick up my next one I've yarned over because I'm doing treble stitch and if you find it difficult to get your hook into that um, pistachio back stitch if you just I well my my tried and true method is just to tease it on with my fingernail just pull it on and that way it it sits on quite well so there's my first treble stitch. Yarn over into the next one. Let's just try it first of all without doing any teasing on. And there it goes. Yarn over into the next one. You can tell that this is not going to be a quick job. It's going to um, require patience and you don't want to think, oh, I've got half an hour, I'm just going to zip round here and do this because you won't do it in half an hour. But it's so worth it in the end to have this lovely envelope border. And once this first row is done, it's plain sailing because you're just working treble stitches on top of treble stitches. So that's not a problem. Um, so just work around into each of the um, pistachio coloured stitches and you can see now why I chose to do a lighter colour because it helps them to see, it helps you to see them in the against the other and in fact you'll be doing it against the khaki and you'll reap the benefit of having done your stitches reasonably loosely because they won't have pulled tight and disappeared into the back of the um, fabric of the blanket. As it, there are various methods for um, picking up this stitch. You can put your hook upside down and pull it through like that. Catch that. So basically what you're doing is instead of using the head of the crochet hook to go in first, you're going in first with the actual hook part which is slightly smaller. So you can do that. But as I say, I have just found that if I just do that with my fingernail, oops, that's a particularly tight one, but it will come. Um, it just pulls it onto the hook and we're fine. So some bits will feel a bit tight and others will just be a breeze. So just don't worry too much about it and just think that this very first round on this side is the worst and that's getting the worst over with and once that's done it's plain sailing there we go and there you can see how neat that looks against that edge right 
I'm going to work along to the end and then I'll start working down this side and I'll come back when I've got a bit more of it done to let you see how it's looking. See you then. I've now gone all the way along this um, short edge and I'm at the corner. So what you need to do when you get to the corner, you've done your last uh, slip stitch, worked into your last slip stitch on the short side and you just need to chain two to take you around the corner and then we continue along the long side. Again, just doing whatever is the easiest way to get your hook into that stitch and uh, as I, I said before there's one or two ways of doing it you'll find the way that suits you best but I quite like just using the nail from my right hand really rather than the one my thumbnail and just tease it over and with the treble stitch you're just going to work all the way around remembering to chain two in each of the corners until you get back where you started. And as I said before, this will take a while, so don't, this is a, a long journey rather than a short trip, but it is worth it in the end. So I'll just keep doing this. Oops until I've done my, th oh, my three sides and then I'll show you the next part. And then we have to do th the other side of course, which will be exactly the same, but I'll do a little bit of that as well for you. So I'll see you when I've done the rest of this and we'll start the second row and you can do, I, I did three rows of treble stitch. Uh, you could make it just two if you wanted a slightly narrower border. There's still enough room to trap all your yarns, all your ends. So um, it's up to you. I like the, because it's a fairly big blanket, I like the th ro three rows of treble. And honestly, of course, once you've finished this uh, round of treble stitches and you're doing the next round, you're just zipping along quite happily, working into, um, all the tops of these so there's no problem with that. So I'll see you with a little bit more of this in a minute and then we'll move on to the next row. I've come all the way around with my treble stitch now and I remembered to chain two in the corners and I've come back, got back to where I started and you'll see that you've got your first chain two which was your the equivalent of your first treble stitch so all you need to do is uh, slip stitch into the top of that first chain two and that's your first round complete now chain two again and turn your blanket round this is where you can actually see the wrong side or not maybe not the wrong side the other side of the blanket where you've got where you will be doing your um other side of the envelope border but we're still working on the first side so we've got now you can take a deep breath sigh of relief you've done your first round on this side and from now on it's just working into the tops of the trebles and that is easy peasy. Bit boring, but easy peasy. While I was um, doing these long rounds of the border, when I was making my blanket, I uh, gave myself a, a boost, if you like. What I did was every hundred stitches or so, I took a quick break or I had a treat I mentioned that on my um, Instagram page, <clears throat> I would maybe have a walk around the garden or make a cup of tea or um, have a biscuit, I shouldn't be, but I did, or things like that. Just, it gave you the impetus to keep doing another hundred, just another hundred stitches and I'll have a chocolate or another hundred stitches and I'll 
check my emails. And that kept, <laughs> kept the boredom away, which was uh, a good thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work up with this treble stitch to the first corner and show you what to do there. And then I'll leave you to work your other, finish off this round and work the other round with the treble on this side. And then I'll show you what to do on the other side. So we've got to the corner. Here's the two, um, chains for the corner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to treble two in that corner and then chain two and then treble two. And that's going to take me around the corner ready to do the next side. And you get a nice neat corner. And uh, again just keep these ends, because we're working down one of the long sides now, just keep these ends out of the way, push them down out of the way as you're working so that you're not getting tangled up in the ends of the, the blanket. And working with this um, smaller hook keeps it quite neat. Um, the other thing I would say is it's quite a good idea to, maybe I should have said this earlier, when you put your stitch markers in every 20 um, stitches, in every four, in, what was I trying to say? When you put your stitch markers in every four inches, it's probably a good idea to leave them in because then you can check across the way to make sure that you're kind of balancing up. You should have pretty much the same number of stitches on the long sides. You will have the same number top and bottom because they were actually working into stitches, but where you were creating these stitches down the side, um, you should have pretty much the same number. You might be one or two out, and one or two doesn't really matter at all. But if you're, a, if you're out by maybe six stitches or so, so there's maybe six more stitches on one long side than you have on the other side. You can adjust when you're doing this row. Um, you could um, work a couple of stitches together just to make it slightly smaller. But I found when I was doing the two long sides, I sat and counted and I didn't, it doesn't matter what number of stitches I had because you might be slightly different. But I did count both of my long sides and I think I was out by about, I think it was two stitches I was out between one side and the other and that's okay. That's not going to make any difference to the border. So that's what to do, which will give you a task for a while. But to finish off all the way around this um, first, well, second row of treble stitches, and then you can make your third row. As I said, if you really don't want to make a big double border, you can finish up with the, the two, but I think that's a bit mean. I would put another row of treble stitches in uh, for this size of blanket. So three rounds of treble on this side and then I'll show you what to do with the other side. Well, that's my uh, first side finished with my three rows of treble stitch. And of course, I remember to do two trebles, two chains, two trebles in each of the corners. Um, as I said before, uh, I'm only doing three sides of my sample piece, so this doesn't this won't look like yours. You'll have come up and around and finished off with um, your final slip stitch into the top of the first chain two. So your, um, your edge will look different. You don't have a big gap here. So now I've turned it and I'm on the other side and we're off and running with the second side of the envelope border. So I have... Um, 
made my slip stitch and chained two as normal and I'm working into the, ch the chains of the slip stitch if you like but there's, see there's two loops each each uh, stitch of the um, slip stitch has two loops you're just going to be working into the loop which is um, on the inside nearest you know the one the loop that's away from the edge of the blanket that's the loop that you're going to be working into again with your treble stitch and it should be easier this time because it's easier that the stitch tends to sit more on the surface um, this first little one is a little bit tricky but um, once you get into the hang of it it's not a problem really at all so just again you're working around like before the very first round is the trickiest to do and it's the same idea when you get to the corner you treble two uh, chain two in the corner and continue all the way round with your first row finish finish off with a slip stitch chain two and start your second row and you can see what's happening the um, second part of the border is beginning to grow it's like you're building two walls and when I'll, I'll work along here and then I'll show you what happens when we come along to the bit with all these horrible ends that you want to lose and that's when the magic starts to happen so I'll continue along with this along this edge remember just the outs outs do you call it the outside the bottom loop of the um, slip stitch and round the corner and then I'll show you what I'm doing down the side and then after that it's plain sailing to get to the um, two sides built up and then I'll show you how to do the um, final bit. Here you can see I have come up to the corner, put in my chain two and I'm round the corner now ready to go down the long side of the blanket and this is where we have all these pretty horrible ends. So push them up as you work along and through the one loop of the slip stitch as I say every so often actually the slip stitch is easier on this side than the other side but every so often there's one that's a little tighter And we're just keeping these ends on the away from the edge. We don't want them to come over here like this and then work on the other side of them because the, the whole point of this double border is to trap these ends. So they have to be kept up out of the way while you're um, crocheting. one loop somebody said that one of their that they reckon that one of their every hundred stitches treat would be a glass of wine <laughs> But I don't think that's a very good idea because you've got quite a few hundred stitches to do. If you had that every hundred stitches, I don't reckon your uh, crocheting would be very straight. There we go. I will stop at this point. Now, here you can see the first border, the ends which will get hidden, and then this <clears throat> second border beginning to grow. So what I'll do is I'll work my border exactly the same as this side um, with the when you come to the second row it's uh, two trebles 
chain two true trebles in the corners. And when I've done the three rows all together, I'll be back to show you how to join them together. This is looking a little bit different now, isn't it? I've got my two sides of the um, envelope border finished, three rows of treble stitch on each side, and the ends are already hiding neatly between the two edges, which is great. And all you need to do now is seal up that top edge with um, a crochet stitch, and that's goodbye to all these ends. And doesn't it look wonderful? I really, I think the uh, back stitch work that you, not sorry, not back stitch, I keep calling it back stitch, the slip stitch work that you do to start with, although it's a pest and it's a, a bit of a slog to do, it makes the look of the edge so worth it. And on both sides, look at that, fabulous. Oops, can you see that? Both sides. Now, in my uh, main blanket, I, like I said earlier, I did my uh, side to side slip stitch join to go along. Oops, see if I can get that in pitch in camera. There you go. To go along using my uh, James Seabrett SW9 yarn, which is the variegated one. Um, I'll show it, certainly show you that and how to do it. But I also am coming round to the idea that keeping it very simple and just using the meadow as uh, the joining colour is every bit as good. So I have started that, as you can see here. It's quite invisible, really. And I'm going to, I'm still using my three and a half millimetre hook. And I'm going to do a little bit of that. And then I'll do a little bit of the side to side and you can decide for yourself. One other thing is I treat this um, double-sided border kind of like I would be making something like in sewing. Um, say I was making a garment. When I'm joining, if you're making anything when you're sewing with a sewing machine, you usually pin things together to hold them as you sew. And so I've used my stitch markers to hold the sides together and that, that way you don't need to worry about um, maybe one side moving further up and creating a bulge, that kind of thing. What I did roughly was put a stitch marker every 20 stitches or so um, and you can see that they, as you do that you can see that the stitches match up with each other. And I think that's really good help. It just means that you don't end up at the other end of your blanket with two corners that are out of alignment. So take a few minutes to do that and then it's plain sailing really. So basically what I'm doing with this uh, meadow yarn is just a simple stitch to hold the two sides together and what I'm doing is I'm just putting my hook into into the next two stitches now and pulling through and pulling through and again it's kind of like a slip stitch just into the two stitches and pulling through. If you find it a bit tricky to pull through all of the stitches uh, as I did you can just use the outer um, loops of the stitch on either side but and that will also work but honestly I just put it through the two because to, to be fair it's easier there we go um, just going through the two stitches and pulling through and you can see how that really just disappears into the edge. I'll work up to the corner. The other thing about this um, choice of 
stitch to finish off the border is that <laughs> it is quicker to do than the side to side because there's one less stitch to do. So that may also influence you. There we go. And I'll just take this stitch marker out just now. Because it's just getting in the way before I go round the corner. So I'm just going to work into the next stitch. Oops. And then when you come to the corner, just work around the corner. You don't need to do any uh, fancy extra chains or anything. Just work around the stitches on the corner or you can work into the corner itself. I maybe put a couple of stitches into the corner, possibly three, just to take you round the corner. So that's one, that one's not wanting to go, two, three. Uh, and that will take you round the corner, ready to go down the other side. Here we go. You can see what I've done there. And then you can just pick up your stitches to go down the other side. So that is the first way of doing the edge. And as I say, I'm actually quite liking that. Um, I'll just put that corner stitch in. It's not cooperating this morning. I've just been out for a, a walk in a very misty foggy day and everything's a bit damp and I think my hands are a bit cold but there we go there's me taking you around the corner so you would just work all the way around with that stitch and um, I'm just going to pull that one through so it doesn't start unraveling on this sample you'd work all the way around with that stitch till you come back to the beginning and just finish off so that's just the simple slip stitch now what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump up to this point because I, I want to do a few stitches that will take you around this corner and, and show you how I do that little bobble stitch at uh, the corner when I'm doing the side to side slip stitch join. And that little bobble stitch can be done on the with the, the green slip stitch as well by the way. So I'm going to start on one side with my, this is my James C. Brett yarn. There was quite a lot of it left over after um, buying the extra balls for the, the blanket. So it just seemed at the time a good idea to use a bit of it up by working on the border. And as I say, it's your choice which one you want to make. Right, so I have started on one side. Oh, by the way, there are all these ends neatly put to bed between the two sides of the border. It's great. Isn't it? So I've attached my variegated yarn to one side of the border and you just need to find the equivalent stitch on the other side and make a slip stitch. Then come back to your first side make another slip stitch and so on so you're working from one side to the other each time and you want to keep it a little bit uh, even temp tension or loose tension don't pull it too tight and you get the nice braided effect of the slip stitch join now the downside of this, of course, is that you are doing twice as many stitches <laughs> as the simple green one that I did earlier. So it's up to you. It get, makes a little bit more of a feature of the join and that might be something that you're happy with. Although I do suspect that most of you will opt for the simple one. This is not difficult. I'm not saying it's difficult, but it's just um, 
a little bit longer to do because of the fact that there are two stitches. So I'll leave it to you to decide um, which one. I wouldn't bother using the variegated yarn for the simple slip stitch join because it's not really worth it. I think you want to just uh, keep that in the same colour as the border. And then when you get to the edge, to the corner, you just put a couple of extra uh, stitches in to get round the corner. But while you're doing that, I can show you how to make this um, bobble stitch if you want to in the corners. Right, so I have reached, no, that's not, I have reached my corner now. There's my two um, spaces. So I'm going to go in, I'm actually going to go in the two and just make a simple um, slip stitch join in for the first one like that. And now to make the bobble stitch, I'm going to chain three, four, five. And then I'm going to yarn over, go into the base of my, the very first chain stitch that I made, try to pick up two loops and make the beginnings of a treble stitch. But stop when there are still two loops on the hook. Yarn over, go back into that first chain and make the first half of another treble. So there are three loops on the hook and repeat that just going through the two loops each time so you've got four on the hook and then you end up with five loops on the hook and pull through all of these and finish off with a slip stitch and that slip stitch just pulls them all together and makes that little bump, that little bobble. And then you can make another slip stitch into your corner to take you round, ready to start the, uh, going down the other side with your side to side slip stitch join. And there's your bobble stitch in the corner. So if that's what you want to do with yours, fine. If not, just take it straight round. I'm leaving the option to you to whatever you want to do.